And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad to see you here. Today, my topic is about compute node high availability, but it's in a distributed health checking way. The slides are a united effort of Xu Hejie from Intel, and he's also known as Alex Xi in Nova community, and Liu Jingwei from China Mobile, which is the largest um, uh, telecommunication company in China, and me, Zhou Zhengsheng, um, from AW Cloud, and it's a it's an OpenStack startup company in China, and you can call me Zhengsheng. So here is the agenda. Uh, firstly, I'd like to give some context information about why we are doing compute no high availability and what problems we solve. I will also explain how we implement the very first version of compute no high availability. Secondly, I'll discuss the problems in the first HA implementation and how we can make all the checks and heartbeats distributed to all the nodes. Then Alex Xu will give us some insights on uh, what needs to be done in the Nova project and Jun Wei will share some experience on handling HA events in Celometer. At the last, if we still have time, I can show you a live demo. So what's compute node high availability and why we need it at all? Compute node is a physical machine running Nova instances. Uh, compute node high availability means when machine hardware or network link fails, or the host operating system crashes, the node should be fenced and shut down. And the tenant virtual machines on the node get relocated and rebooted on other compute nodes. But as far as I know, the upstream OpenStack did not consider compute node HA a problem. Because OpenStack was firstly designed to be run uh, in public cloud, and we assume the workloads are cattle alike. When the compute node dies, the virtual machine dies. Who cares? Um, we host cattle, not pets. This is exactly what cloud computing is about, right? And, but uh, OpenStack demands the tenant workloads themselves to provide fault tolerance and failover abilities. Say, you have to uh, restructure your application in a modern microservices way or deploy clustering and load balancing middleware in your uh, virtual machine. As OpenStack ex expands the horizon to private cloud today, you will see a lot of customers already run virtual machine on proprietary virtualization platform and depend on the virtualization platform to provide HA for their virtual machines, especially in traditional industries and among our customers. They rely relying on compute node high availability a lot. And the, the applications they have may be monolithic proprietary software, so you cannot change the code, or even they develop their software uh, themselves uh, without considering HA, and, but rely on the platform. Uh, in reality, some of our customers in China even consider compute node HA is one of the key features. If we don't support that, they will not consider using OpenStack. This is why we try to add this feature to AWS Cloud OpenStack offering. So, um, at first, uh, we think OpenStack Compute Node HA is easy. You can even do this at home. You can just run a Chrome job or a shell loop, then use a Nova service list to find out all the Nova computer services. If the node gets crashed or the management network of the node is down, the Nova service starts become down. So you can grab the down the service instance and pick the host name. And then call IPMI to shut down the physical machine and finally call Nova Evacuate. Yeah. Um, so the solution is perfect. And the customer and AW Cloud uh, live a happy life ever since. Until one day the customers uh, call our service phone to complain we just kill a tenant virtual machine without any reason. So let's see what the problem is here. Uh, what the problems are. Uh, this, there is an example architecture that uh, we deploy for our customer. We have a PXE network 
uh, and uh, Puppet Node to install open operating system and OpenStack components automatically. We have three controller nodes. Uh, they are running MySQL with Gatherer, RabbitMQ cluster, and all the API and scheduler services in a high availability fashion. We offer self as distributed storage backend for Glance and Cinder, and we boot our virtual machines from Cinder volume. Uh, this is our typical deployment. And um, we have OpenStack management network, uh, this, and the, all the REST API calls and uh, RPC happens in this network, the virtual machine, and then access the self-storage in storage network. Uh, and the network traffic between virtual machines uh, run in the tenant network. It may be a GRE or VXLAN channel, uh, but usually we deploy VX, uh, VLAN for our customers because it's private cloud. All these networks are physically separated. Uh, there may be dedicated hardware switch for a particular network. Uh, if they share a switch, we allocate VLAN IDs for them respectively. Um, the point is that Nova Compute Service send heartbeats on their management network. Okay, on the management network. And if the management network of the computer node is down, we cannot manage life cycle or of the existing virtual machines, and we cannot bring up new virtual machines on this node. But it actually does not affect already running virtual machines and their applications. Because all the tenant network and storage IO requests are not affected by management network outage. If you consider the ultimate goal of high availability is to minimize uh, application downtime. So in this case, we should not, uh, we should neither shut down this compute node nor evacuate the host. We should just let it be and have the system send an email to a human operator to check the management network on this node. Uh, um, some vendors use Pacemaker and Zookeeper and depend on the built-in heartbeat mechanism of these projects to monitor the compute nodes. But uh, Pacemaker and Zookeeper requires remote node to send heartbeat. And however, by default, people only deploy one heartbeat network for Pacemaker and Zookeeper. And the heartbeat network is usually run on OpenStack management network. It will run into the same problem here. Another problem here is that if the sh uh, storage network or tenant network is down, the virtual machines might crash or the application in the virtual machine loses connectivity. In this case, you actually want to evacuate the compute node or live migrate the, uh, the virtual machines if possible. Again, we only run, if we only run one heartbeat network, we don't have enough information to do the correct decision. So here comes uh, our version one implementation to solve the abrupt problems, we design our uh, HAS monitoring service. We run the monitoring service on one of the controllers, and the service pings all the compute nodes um, via the management network, sort storage network, and underlay tenant network. Then it gathers, uh, gathers compute node connectivity information and consult, uh, consult an action matrix. According, according to the matrix, uh, if it may send email or shut down e and evacuate the host. So let's see how, uh, how the action matrix look like. And this is an example matrix. Let's see the first row. The first row. Uh, say if the management network of compute node is down, it just send an email without interfering their virtual machines. And you see the second row, uh, it tells us if the storage network is down, the compute node cannot access the self cluster. If the virtual machine are booted from single volume, the guest OS may already crashed. So you can just fence and evacuate. But if your virtual machine image are stored on node local file system, in this case, it should, now, uh, it should do nothing except sending an email to a hum human operator. I mean that um, the, uh, the action matrix depends on the OpenStack deployment configuration. It really differs from customer to customer. There's no single and correct action matrix uh, for all the situations. You should design your own. Um, so um, let's back to this. So we still have some problems. Uh, the first one is 
um, the monitoring service is a single point of failure. Itself needs to be high, uh, highly available. Secondly, if a uh, computer happens to lose the power supply, we will not be able to shut it down remotely. Uh, sure, because the IPMI unit on the machine also loses power, and we, we are losing control of this machine. And at last, there's only one monitoring service instance. It's, it has to provide all the compute node on all the service networks. It does not sound very scalable. So we are implementing distributed health checking. Um, we want to use Pacemaker and uh, Zookeeper, but finally we decide to build all the things based on console. Uh, the project console is a well-known project in microservice and container community. It is actually a service registry and discovery tool, but it's more than that. It provides a key value store, uh, which is replicated among all the console servers. It also offers strong uh, consensus among the server nodes. So you can use it as a distributed log manager or perform leader election. You can register health checks in the console, uh, console agent. I can explain this later. And it also can manage thousands of nodes according to the official documentation. All these features are exposed via REST API. So let's see its architecture. Um, this slide shows how we deploy a console cluster in an OpenStack environment. And each controller runs a console server. And the console server runs the rough, rough, raft algorithm and synchronizes the state between the servers. And raft is a consensus algorithm for the state machine replication. In the short word, if we successfully put something into the key value store on one of the console server, we can read the value in other console server immediately. And this is like the keeper and pacemaker. And we then run console agent on all the compute nodes. Uh, the interesting part is that all the console processes, whether it's server or agent, participate in a gossip cluster. The, go uh, the console process exchange messages using the gossip pro protocol. For now, you can just think it's a messaging protocol. I will explain in the next slide. And you can register health checks dynamically in each agent. Uh, the agent runs the check in a configurable interval. The check is edge triggered. Uh, for example, if we ask console agent to check if CPU temperature is below 90 degrees uh, Celsius, the console agent will not report the CPU temperature to the console server each time. The agent only communicate with the server when the CPU is too hot. So here comes the gossip protocol. Um, it's one of the uh, most famous protocols in the world of peer-to-peer -peer networks. When the node one, for example, wants to broadcast a message to all the nodes, uh, in the cluster, it can pick a number of nodes in a random and send the message. In this slide, it sends the message node 2 and node 3, and node 2 and node 3 will also pick some node in random and relay the message. Finally, the message gets delivered to all the nodes in the cluster. You might think the gossip protocol is not very efficient, it's just message flooding. But the key point is that for each single node, in uh, the bandwidth and CPU power do not increase as much as the number of nodes in the cluster increases. The convergence time is acceptable for health checking and membership probing. You can uh, click, here's a link below, there is a simulator. It can calculate how long it will take for a message to be delivered to all the nodes according to the cluster size and how we probe each other. The most interesting mechanism in console, I think, is how it detects node failure. In Zookeeper and Pacemaker, the, he the heartbeats happens uh, between a static number of server nodes and a large number of remote nodes. In the console cluster, every node just picks some other nodes in random and ping each other. And if, say, node one cannot get a response from node two, so node one will uh, pick, uh, for example, node 4 and node 3 and ask them to pin node 2. Um, and if, uh, say, node 1, uh, let's go to the next slide. If all the other nodes does not get a response from the node 2, node 1 will broadcast a gossip message saying that node 2 is suspicious 
If no two can communicate with at least one of the nodes in the gossip cluster, it can finally get this message and it can respond that, oh, hey, I'm okay, I'm not dead. But if no two is actually dropped, no one is sending a clarifi clarification. Then node one thinks node two is offline. Then node one gossips the message to the whole cluster. In this way, every node in the cluster has the full knowledge of the membership and status of other nodes. So how we can, ah, this is the slide. So how we can utilize this feature? Um, so the firstly, the monitoring service now fetches the membership and status from console server. We can then solve them, uh, and then we solve the monitoring service HA problem. We also implemented a complement fancy method using console events mechanism. So let's see the architecture. The architecture. And there's the, the architecture of a solution V2. You can see there are three OpenStack controllers above. And two compute nodes here in every, uh, in every important service network, namely storage, management, and tenant network. We run a dedicated console cluster and perform the distributed poll. As you can see, there are actually three console agents in compute node, uh, in, in compute node one. The first console agent joins the gossip cluster dedicated for storage network and the same as management console and tenant console agent. So for each controller node, we run a monitoring service. And these are three, uh, there are three instances of monitoring service and they elect a leader service under the help of console coordination. Then the service instance which has taken the leader role will consolidate all the health checks and membership information from all the three console server agents on this uh, controller node. So it now has all the connectivity information of all the compute and controller nodes on all three networks. Then the monitoring service will be able to consult the action matrix I mentioned above and do whatever it should. In and then the other two monitoring service instance just keep checking whether there is a leader or not. If the leader controller is down, for example, controller one is down, the, le the leader lock will be automatically released by console. Then one of the alive service in instance will become the leader and then continue the monitoring. So um, here's a little bit more detail about the monitoring service itself. Alex once asked me that um, um, why the monitoring service has to elect a leader themselves? Because console server already elects a leader using raft algorithm. Can we just fetch the raft leader information from console server and use it? Uh, the answer is that the raft leader role cannot be controlled by the application, so we are not using it. Let's think of the following case. F uh, suppose the console server on the management network uh, Node one, controller one is the raft oh, sorry, is the raft leader. And, and then we just find this controller node lost storage, lost storage connection, uh, connectivity. In this case, um, in, in this node point of view, every other node have loose connectivity on storage network, but this is not true actually. Uh, in this case, we can not trust the, the, the information fetched from the storage console server on this node. So we want to migrate the leader row to the other nodes with healthy connectivity. So you can see the application level leader is totally different from the console cluster leader. So console provide very nice simple API for the application to acquire and release a distributed lock. On the official side, there is also a guide on how to implement leader election using the REST API. We also has, uh, have a list of fenced nodes. Once the monitoring service shuts down a machine, it appends the machine to the fenced node list and just keep uh, skip nodes in the list when uh, it, uh, it runs the action matrix. Uh, this gives uh, the human operator a chance to manually power on the machine and fix the problem. Otherwise, the monitoring service will keep shutting down the machine in a loop. To share this information among all the monitoring service instances, uh, so we can still have this information after we migrate a leader row. So we save this information in console key value store. 
um, this is the main part. And then uh, we, at last, we in implement a fence method. Uh, usually, usually monitoring service use IPMI to shut down the compute node remotely. But it, uh, if it failed to do so, it can fire a fence event from the console server. Then the console server delivers the event using the gossip protocol to the node to be fenced. In console agent, we can register a watch with handler for the event. So obviously, upon receiving the fence event, it just shut down the machine. And we currently use storage network as our console fence network because it's crucial for our service. Um, once we detect the console agent losses, uh, connectivity on the storage network, we have the node commit suicide and shut down itself. This is necessary piece of self fencing. We can be sure, so we can be sure that um, when losing control from when we losing control from outside of the node, the node either commits suicide or the node loses power. Uh, in either way, we are sure about uh, that the node is shut down and is safe to evacuate the com uh, the compute node. So here uh, is all of our con uh, version two implementation. And how about our solution versus pacemaker remote? Sometimes people ask me in uh, ask me that in what way this solution is better than pacemaker and zookeeper. In fact, uh, we use pacemaker heavily for MySQL, uh, RabbitMQ cluster, and OpenStack API services. I also investigated the pacemaker and zookeeper solution. Um, but you can see there are a lot of limits in pacemaker and zookeeper. Um, basically, you can achieve, approximately achieve the same effort using pacemaker and zookeeper, but uh, just a lot harder. And I think it's a lot, a lot simpler to implement the solution based on console. Uh, besides, only console provides a scalable distributed probe mechanism. So um, our version two solution is not perfect and we want to add more feature. The most important thing to do here, at, at least a lot, but the most important thing to do here is to reserve some bandwidth for the gossip messages. You can use the gossip simulator to calculate the overall bandwidth for each node. Um, uh, I mentioned the link uh, earlier. So my talk is here. Next is Hejie. Okay, I will go give a quick look through what's about the thing we need uh, in Nova to support such a, a distributed house, uh, house check system. So this this house check system is built on S house actually, so uh, we really missing something in Nova to support that. So lead to we have to hack some code in Nova. So first thing is a service a API. Actually, we can use this service API to get uh, uh, Nova computer service status to know whether it's up or down. Um, uh, uh, under this API is a uh, is a thing called the service group, and in the NOAA internal and uh, backend with uh, DB or memory catcher or zone keeper, uh, it is it it is a sh implement a heartbeat uh, for the NOAA compute service. When the heartbeat heartbeat is down, we'll feed back to NOAA. NOAA will will re report this back uh, from the API. So the problem is that this is just a monitor for the Nova Compute Service or say uh, Nova Compute Process. So, and it normally it's just running on the man management network. So that's uh, also the reason why we build such a external system to monitor the shared, uh, shared storage network and uh, tenant network. Um, so for, for our uh, external external health check system. So we need we need a way to feed back the NOAA compute st status back to NOAA. So we really need a, a new API. And this API is uh, already enabled in Liberty and with micro version 2.11. So after our system upgrade the Liberty, we will get this ability. 
Okay, after that, we already set our uh, service down, so uh, we can begin to evacuate the instance. So this uh, is API sample about uh, evacuating instance in S house. So basically, you need a specified two parameter. First one is house. So you need this need our system to find out uh, a house the uh, the instance evacuate where. So the problem is uh, our external internal system hard to know which house is best, and uh, even we we doing something that may uh, that may invalidate the the initial NOAA scheduler scheduler uh, po uh, scheduling policy. So we really really hope this can be done the NOAA scheduler, and uh, for the last thing, this is already enabled in the Juno. The house parameter is become uh, optional, so when you evacuate in instance and uh, Nova scheduler will choose a house for you. So, but uh, this is still not enough for 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 the scheduling. So, as we know, you can pass uh, some scheduling customers custom scheduling policy in when you booting a new instance. So, but the problem is. Uh, that uh, scheduling policy didn't persist in the NOAA. So when you evacuate the instance, so that scheduling policy is missing. So we, we still have a chance to invalidate uh, this schedule policy. And uh, this is work in progress, uh, process uh, this policy in NOAA, and uh, we hope we can have that in Mitaka. Um, the last thing, is the unshared story. It's pretty similar. It's hard for our external system to know uh, whether the target uh, house the whether on the shared storage or not. And uh, this is also in progress work in the community and makes this parameter to be optional. And after that, uh, the evacuate API become very easy and. Uh, and uh, this is good for our instances, uh, not just for us. I think it's for all the people who want to implement their uh, external health check system. Okay, that's all. That's all about Nova. So, to me. Hello, everyone. Um, I will talk about uh, our high availability solution of virtual machine level used in China mobile private cloud. Uh, in our solution, we used uh, we implement our solution to use to be best Cinemeter because, as we know, Cinemeter is a good framework for monitoring and uh, alerting. Um, first of all, in our solution, we must uh, install guest agent in the watch machine as a channel for collecting health, health data. The guest agent put the health data to centimeter computer agent at last the data to centimeter database. We also add two centimeter metrics. The first one is instance pin delay, and which represents um, the Tenant network health by pin the virtual machine gateway, default gateway. The second is instance disk health, which represents the storage network health. We also define two formula to trig an centimeter alarm as follows. The right is our architecture. We can simply see simply. Um, now we introduce the two centimeter alarms in detail. We can see the pin delay alarm. It means calculate the average value once every 10 seconds. If all of three, three continuous average value are more than threshold. Centimeter should trigger an 
alarm of pin delay. The disk health alarm is as the same as pin delay alarm. We can see here. As default, the accelerometer supports three alarm handler actions, email, SMS, and the REST API. In China Mobile Private Cloud, we use email and the REST API handler actions. And for REST API, uh, we, we can users can configure to use one of this Nova API or all of them to satisfy your requirements. Also, you can um, use other high availability system API as the handler action. At the last, we, our solution has some advantages. For example, it can deal with the high availability of virtual machine level, and it can deal with tenant network failures and the storage network failures. However, it has some disadvantages. It doesn't deal with management network failures and RPMI network failures. It, it does too many duplicatable checks if the host is failure. And uh, it uh, must depend on a uh, guest, guest agent, for example, K QEMU guest agent. Fortunately, we combine with cancel mechanism, we can overcome most of this advantages above. Thank you. So let's see if we have connectivity. And this is our horizon. We uh, we do a heavy customization for horizon. Oh. A bit slow network. Okay. Let's see. Um, so let me migrate the virtual machine to uh, workout. Okay. We are ex uh, doing the experiment on node 4. So I migrate the virtual machine to live migrate to node 4. And then in here, Here we see the monitoring logs of the monitoring service. So we have three um, monitoring service running, and uh, these two are hot standby in hot standby mode. They, they are saying, "Oh, we are not the leader," and so th uh, in in this uh, is the leader. So it prints the connectivity information, and so let's see um, the host. Um, there is a virtual machine, and then we can just uh, shut down the uh, tenant network. It's, uh, it's on ETH2. 
uh, it's a VLAN. So um, our monitoring cycle is about 30 seconds. Uh, actually, by this time, console um, cluster already detect the node 4 is down in the tenant network. Uh, here you can see um, when the monitoring cycle comes, it says that uh, it cannot connect uh, to node 4, and it uses IPMI to shut down the node, and it's scheduling host evacuation for node 4. After 65 seconds, we are waiting uh, for the Nova service to be uh, marked down. But if we are using Liberty, you, you can use API to do this. And um, it's continue checking. So let's see in this node. Sorry. And we have a client, um, we can list uh, the nodes we fenced. So we can see node 4 is fenced. We, we fenced the node 4 on, on this machine and we can fetch the information there. And you can see it, it already triggered uh, force host evacuation. This uh, is our hack, uh, our own extension. But if you are using Liberty, you can use the API instead. So let's see how it goes. Just update. Okay, it's um, rebooted on node three. Let's see if we can get the connection. Oh, the window goes here. Let me check. So it's up. Um, so is there any questions? Maybe, uh, please, uh, please stand to the microphone. Uh, so what? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what steps do you take to make sure that the evacuate actually completes? Um, for now, we are just waiting for sixty-five seconds. But uh, if, uh, as I mentioned, I have. Um, Sorry, uh, open the slide. We have a suicide suicide um, mechanism here. Here, so um, uh, the suicide mechanism uh, keep uh, make uh, we help uh, help us make sure that if we wait for at least uh, about some time, it will either shut down or it's uh, it has power failure. Okay, but that, that that wasn't really my question. The the Nova evacuate call is not reliable. Um, yeah, I there's think like it's a, there's about six or seven different ways that um, a Nova uh, an evacuate request can get lost by the system. Um, sorry, would you? There's like half a dozen ways in which a Nova evacuate call can get lost. Oh, oh, yeah. you you mean that if the evacuation call uh, is uh, uh, itself fails, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So maybe. <laughs> so here, uh, actually, actually, we are sending we are sending a email to the operator. So uh, you can see uh, see if I can get an email. Um, it's not a hundred. It's not 100% successful, but at least you get the email. If your service is down, you can check your email and see, oh, the node has a problem.
also here. He sends an email to me just now. Oh, thank you. Let yes. How many failures uh, can you handle simultaneously? Oh, um, this is our future plan. Um, we want to add a limit on the concurrent failures um, by configuration. We now can just handle, um, uh, for, for example, you, if you are over committing your hardware, um, handling failures can be very difficult. But if you uh, leave one or two hosts uh, uh, not very so busy, you can uh, plan in advance. Uh, yeah. I'm not talking about capacity. Uh, one node dies, two node dies, three oh, Okay, okay, okay. So uh, as long Forget as... Forget about the instances for a second. I'm talking about the entire infrastructure. Okay. So as long as the console cluster are alive, um, uh, we can continue to operate. So the console cluster need uh, as uh, at least half of the server agents alive. So if we have three server agents, as long as two of them are alive, um, it can continue to operate. Um, uh, even if you are all, all your uh, compute node down, um, you can still use the monitoring service. Uh, in this is very extreme situation. But if you uh, care about uh, the the high availability more, you can deploy more console server agent on, uh, on, on more machines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there you go. Um. Uh, so the, you gave some reasons for not using Pacemaker. Yeah. Uh, and so one was that the typically it monitors on the management network? Yes, and Pacemaker relies on, uh, the server node of Pacemaker relies on CrossSync. And CrossSync, in CrossSync you can actually <laughs> use multiple hybrid network, yeah. but uh, it's not very flexible. You, 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 you either use it or, or you either use it as a standby mode. S so uh, you, you see we have an action matrix, so we have to um, uh, make our decision more flexibly. So pacemaker upon crossing uh, is not so flexible in this way. You're talking about RRP though, um, the Dutton Ring Protocol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we don't necessarily recommend RRP. It's better to use, uh, use bonding and VLANs for that sort of stuff. So you get kind of the benefits without the drawbacks. Yeah. So the presentation you describe is like a hard failure, right? Like a network is not pingable or yep. the server is powered down. Yep. How do you deal with the hardware degradation? Say your network Ethernet um, from like say one gig to a hundred megabit, or you your hard disk uh, have some block errors or oh yeah, uh, we have a separate monitoring solution for the health uh, monitoring. And we can monitor all the um, hardware situation, and and this is in in our separate product, not in this uh, project scope. Sorry. I I know I'm hogging all the questions. Um, I'm wondering what limits, because uh, you said one of the reasons for not using Pacemaker was uh, it didn't scale as well. What limits did you hit? Uh, actually, pa uh, Pacemaker with Pacemaker Remote is very good, I think. But uh, as I said, it's a, hard, a bit hard to... Uh, sorry, let me find the slide. Yeah. Um, so in Pacemaker, originally, it uh, limit the cluster size. But in Remote, it can exceed the cluster size. Um, but uh, if you are deploying uh, multiple heartbeat networks like this, like console do, you have to add ping D resource on each uh, compute node, uh, and you have to add three, and you have to ping who? Uh, ping one of the controllers, and uh, if the controller is down, you, you have to ping the other controller. So the but ping D resource, you have to configure a target for it to ping. And this is adds uh, more uh, uh, some complexity for the deployment scripts Wh and management. Why effort. do you need ping D? Because uh, in pacemaker remote, it runs only one heartbeat network, and we if we 
uh, need to run several Heartbeat networks, say in storage network and tenant network, oh, you have to use ping D, right? Bonding would have helped with that as well. Oh, you mean bond all the networks? All right. And then use VLANs. But, um, okay, okay. That's another deployment. Oh, oh yeah. thank you. Uh, our time is up. <laughs>